It was back in 2017 that a Category 5 hurricane wreaked havoc through Dominica. The nature isle, less than 200 miles from Barbados, was severely impacted. 65 people died and thousands of homes were damaged or destroyed. In this episode of In the Know, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt talks about how Dominica has rebuilt, what they've learned from the various disasters, and how they're working to become the first climate-resilient country in the world. We'll also hear from Sam Karak from the Climate Resilience Execution Agency for Dominica, Creed, on infrastructure, how Dominica is building more resilient homes, and what building code regulations have been implemented post Hurricane Maria. I'm Crystal Fultz, and this is In The Know, made possible by the United Nations Foundation. Prime Minister Scarrett, thank you for making the time. Pleasure. Thank you. The last decade in Dominica has been a difficult period, with a number of troughs, Tropical Storm Erica in 2015, and of course Hurricane Maria in 2017. How has Dominica built that better? Well, as you quite rightly said, in, we were affected by Erica in 2015. And after Erica in 2015, I declared to the country that we're going to build back better. And in that instance, we had to relocate two communities, two entire villages. And uh, then we had Maria in 2017. Recognizing the frequency of those disasters and the fact that the industrialized countries were not prepared to take the action uh, where climate change is concerned, and the likely impact this is having on countries like Dominica and other Caribbean and Pacific countries. We declared to the world at the United Nations that we were going to build back better, but very importantly, um, build the first climate resilient nation in the world. Now, this was an ambitious uh, statement because you need resources uh, for this. It's a small country that has just been dramatically ravaged by the hurricane. And so we recognized that it was in our interest that whatever reconstruction that would take place in Dominica, rebuilding that would take place in Dominica, that we needed to include resilience or have resilience at the center of it. We need to do things that could mitigate against the impacts of these natural disasters. Because we recognize they're gonna come, they're gonna come more frequently, and they're going to come more ferociously. And the whole concept of building with resilience in mind is that, one, we can withstand better the impacts of these natural disasters. But secondly, too, uh, that if we're impacted, we can recover much quickly. So there are a number of things that we have done. We have put in place the National Resilience Development Strategy. Um, we've also put in place the, the, the Climate Resilience and Recovery Plan. And we also have the Dynamic Dominica Manifesto. So these are three documents um, which speak to our resilience agenda, or resilience strategy, or resilience vision, or resilience mission. Um, so we have a clear strategy, a clear plan. The plan has been costed. To execute that plan, we created the, the Dominica um, Climate Resilient, e Resilience Execution Agency, CREED, to help um, implement our, our strategy and our national resilience plan. And so far, we've been pretty well with this. For regards to resilience, we look at the infrastructure. So in terms of the construction of our bridges, uh, we employ new engineering practices and techniques, and, and we believe that they, 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 they're working. Um, in our road construction, we have also um, employed new engineering um, techniques and methods or homes where we have focused heavily on resilience building. Because what we want to have, my friend, is that every home in Dominica, every house in Dominica, can be treated as a hurricane shelter. Um, so that they we mitigate against the need for people having to go into public facilities like schools and, and community uh, resource centers as shelters. So homes that we build, uh, where we've been building, are resilient in nature that they can withstand not only hurricanes, but earthquakes earthquakes as well as we are susceptible to earthquakes. Um, so we 
focus heavily on this. We also have been looking at our fiscal policies, our debt policies, to ensure that they, we implement um, policies, fiscal policies that can help us cushion against the impact of a natural disaster or an external shock. Um, and we've seen that the actions we took after Erica helped us during the Muria situation um, to help cushion the impact of, of this natural disaster on us. We've also created a vulnerability uh, reduction uh, fund. Uh, so we have created this fund at our central bank, it's established our central bank, to save for instances of natural disasters so that we have a pool of resources because we found out that when Maria came, we were lucky to have had a significant amount of money um, saved and which we used in the immediate reconstruction of our country. And this is what has helped Dominica if it's, if it's quick recovery. We had access to our own funds in quick time, in an unfettered manner uh, to respond to the needs of our people uh, in Dominica. What can other Caribbean countries like Barbados learn from your process? I mean, as, as being a true regionalist and uh, a true Caribbean person and, and someone who appreciates the Caribbean brothers and sisters very much, I think Dominica can be used as a case study. I think Caribbean countries need to study what happened to Dominica and what has been our response. Because the reality is, every one of our countries in the Caribbean is at risk and is vulnerable to natural disasters. And it doesn't have to take a, a Category 5 hurricane. It, 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 it could take a Category 1 hurricane, Category 2, Category 3. Um, the reality is you have uh, also drought. It's affecting serious, seriously all our countries, uh, affecting um, water sources, uh, affecting agriculture, affecting our healthcare, affecting our economy, affecting jobs. Um, and so it's, it, the issue of climate change and its impacts on us is something that we need to take very, very seriously. And the experience of Dominica is a case study for the Caribbean. And we have documents we can share. Uh, we have experiences that we, had, we, have, we have documented and we're documenting that we can share. And we, have, we can provide in a respectful way advice as to what we believe countries can do to better prepare itself um, for these natural disasters and not wait for a disaster to happen to you uh, to respond. But the, the challenge we have in the Caribbean, in all fairness to all Caribbean countries, is not that they do not know what to do or what they need to do. You have the issue of access to resources. And this is why we have been fighting in the Caribbean uh, with the developed world in respect to actions at COP, at the various COP conferences, uh, to come in with, with practical, pragmatic, sincere action to provide for countries like ours to build resilience, uh, to build mitigation systems, in, mitigation systems in place, to improve our infrastructure. Because what we have found out in Dominica is that to build, to, to include resilience in your system, you need about, you need to increase your budget by about 40%. It costs you about 40% more if you were to have resilience embedded in your infrastructure, the construction of infrastructure would cost you way more than if you were to build ordinarily. And so the, the, the Caribbean countries are going to need uh, resources. They're going to need it in a timely fashion. They're going to need better terms, grants, and, and very concessionary loans with better repayment um, plans. Uh, but they're going to need resources to do so. But Dominica is a case study, I believe, that all Caribbean countries uh, can, can certainly fashion uh, to, to, to learn from us, really, um, of the challenges that we've had and, and how we are able to respond to our natural disasters. Within the Caribbean, it's really not a question of if, but when a hurricane will hit. You've set the goal for Dominica to become the first climate resilient country in the world. What does that look like and how close are you? Well, uh, as, as I said, we set ourselves to become a climate resilient country um, because we have no choice. The developed world is not prepared to take the actions they need to take to reduce the impact of climate 
change on our Caribbean countries. Uh, you have hurricanes coming in and storms coming in more frequently. You, and they're coming in more ferociously. We have no choice. Since Hurricane Maria, we have built about 2,500 homes and the building construction is ongoing. Uh, we have built several bridges and, 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 and imbued in these bridges, in designs of these bridges, the issue of, of resilience. Um, I said our fiscal policies as well, our legislation, agriculture. We've studied uh, which crops did better during the hurricane. And the Ministry of Agriculture is pushing heavily for farmers to, to grow these crops, especially leading up to the hurricane season. Uh, we've studied our, our, our uh, far, forest and to see which trees recovered quicker than others. And, and therefore, forestry, the Forestry Department, Ministry of Forestry and the Environment, uh, is, is looking at those type of trees for, for us to uh, continue to propagate and, and, and to plant. Uh, we still have a long way to go, but we are in a much better position now than we were in 2017. And I believe, uh, by the grace of God, that if, if God forbid, we were to be visited by a hurricane, Dominica will be a much better place uh, to withstand the, the impact of, 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 of a hurricane on us. Um, but we have a way to go. These things require resources. We do not have all of the resources by our, by on our own. Would you say that that's the main challenge? Because it's been over five years since Hurricane Maria and you're still rebuilding. That's a major challenge. Um, that's a major challenge, access to resources. Uh, even if you were to contract loans because of the procurement processes, uh, these things take a long time. And, and I think in, in, in times of disaster, the international financial institutions need to have a, different, a, a special uh, dispensation uh, to provide support to countries like ours. Um, who, who are impacted by natural disasters. But we, we are very comfortable where we are. Um, of course, we're seeking to grow the economy, expand the economy, bring in new sectors. We invest in heavily in the digital economy as a government uh, to create more sustainable jobs for, for people, jobs that can withstand natural disasters. We, we have improved our telecommunication systems in Dominica, our, our, our education system as well, our health system, our health um, or, or health, uh, hospitals and health centers, or entire health system has been um, looked at and, and revisited and, and, and put in a better position to provide healthcare services to our citizens during normal times and more so during difficult um, um, times where you're impacted by a natural disaster. So we, we're comfortable. Uh, I, am, I am very happy with what we have been able to do in large measure by ourselves with some limited support from our development partners, but we're confident that we're in a better position than we were in 2017. Prime Minister Skerritt, thank you for making the time. Thank you very much. When we return, we're talking about how Dominica is building and planting post Arike Maria. Stay with us. Mr. Skerritt, thank you for joining me. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be with you. Let's jump right in. Why was Creed created? Creed was created coming out of uh, experiences that Dominica had um, with, with tropical weather systems and uh, other forms of disasters. Um, commencing in, uh, uh, I think, the, in our lifetime, in the, our post-independence post period, starting with 1979 with Hurricane David, and then subsequent, in subsequent years as well, a number of um, less severe tropical weather systems, but also destructive as well. The succeeding storms, hurricane troughs, troughs have become very troublesome. Whereas the, you may tend to ignore a trough, but it is very destructive. In November, we had two troughs that affected three communities, mainly three communities, more communities, but mainly three. It's, it affected the entire East, but it rendered three communities, three small communities, almost un unlivable. And then we had in 2015 the experience of uh, Storm Erica that rendered nine communities as disaster communities, and government had to relocate two of those communities. Um, um, the community of Dubic and the community of, of Petit Savan. And then, of course, everybody re remembers Hurricane Maria, devastating Hurricane Maria that uh, destroyed 226% of our GDP. 
And so basically we had no GDP, nothing to talk about. And then so the government felt with the, the extent, with the level of the damage, um, you needed an executive body that could provide um, such capacity to, the, to those institutions that could coordinate the recovery effort, um, undertake major capital projects, and also set up a major capital project unit. And this is why CREED was created to ensure that the, the resilience journey um, 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 was, it worked smoothly, it, it, it was taken seriously, there was coordination along the way, and, and so on. So uh, especially among the government agencies, to optimize the use of resources, given that we at the time we had no economy, they were, we were resource scarce, we had, did have some support from, we got quite a bit of support from the international community. We say thank you. But we still needed to be, to, to be strategic in our approach to our re recovery, building back better. 93% of the housing stock was destroyed as a result of Hurricane Maria. That in itself reflects the strength of the hurricane, but it also highlights the vulnerabilities. What building code guidelines have been implemented post-Hurricane Maria? So what we did is that we immediately, um, we worked with engineers with our borders to set up new guidelines for the housing sector. So we specify the type of materials, the grade of materials, the spacing of materials, the foundation, the, the, the way the foundation could, should be structured, the integrity, improving the integrity of the structures. But also we were able to prove the, the building code as well, the building codes, um, the OECS building code, which was adapted to Dominica's situation. We were able to get those approved as well. And we went all over the country, post Maria, in the, bringing together builders and contractors and training them to use the guidelines. So, and also not just builders and contractors, but homeowners as well, we trained them and informed them on the requirements of the guidelines. The galvanized, for example, right? Uh, in the past, we didn't worry about the, the, the gauge of galvanized, but uh, that is roof, um, um, roofing sheets. But uh, post Maria, we, we basically took a decision to use 24 and below, not 26 and 27, as we did in the past, because these basically get torn apart um, by, by, by hurricanes. And so the, even the, the issue, the, the old requirement, because after David, we, were, we had introduced the requirements for hurricane ties. So we, that was reinforced. Right? It was really the need for hurricane ties, were, it was actually reinforced. And um, the spacing of rafters, for example, the overlap, uh, um, the, the gable, for example, we, 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 we gable of the roof. We, we wanted a more hip roof type of, um, because we noticed after Maria that um, uh, based on the roof design, the houses, the roofs survived. But in other cases, um, if you had a flatter roof, uh, in many cases, those roofs, they went. And my final question is as it relates to another vulnerability that post Hurricane Maria highlighted, and that's related to food insecurity, which is only emphasized during the COVID. Yes, yes, yes. Even more. Yes, um, yes. What has dominated them to mitigate that challenge? Well, we, uh, agriculture is still important to our national economy. It's, a very, it's also very important to, to, um, to the, especially the rural communities for employment and food security. But nationally, um, we see it as a major player in terms of food security. And so government has in invested significant amounts of support from the World Bank in, um, in the, the still ongoing and launching and, uh, and the managing, operating uh, an agricultural uh, recovery project, uh, post Maria. And we, uh, the, the, there's a new target that the Prime Minister and government has set in terms of agriculture contributing a larger amount, more like $700 million to, to the GDP of the country annually. And so um, there are a number of initiatives that are being undertaken and, and to build, not just to increase production and productivity, but to build resiliency in the agricultural sector. So, for example, as we speak, there's an effort by, um, by a, a special project from the Canadian um, 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 government uh, that to expand the, the white potato from the white potato industry. We are looking at more of those. We are looking at production um, systems that, are, that do very well 
outside of the hurricane season as well as um, crops that can we can uh, with short uh, maturity cy um, cycle which um, that can be grown. Uh, we could probably do many crops during the hurricane season, short enough to avoid the devastation of hurricanes. Mr. Carrot, thank you for making the time. When we return, we're talking to a contractor here in Dominica. This is Jeffrey Bruno. He's lived and worked in Dominica his entire life. The contractor by profession says the new Dominica building code was necessary. From that time after Maria, our building code changed. We're building more resilient right now. We're building different, and most of our rafters, much of our rafters, casting concrete. And we build, um, we, we, we put steels, and we're building more screws. We don't really use nails. So then that makes us build more resilient after Maria, you know, because um, people use nails. Um, I just nails everything, but right now we don't do that. Majority of the building we do right now, we use screws for the roofing. We use roofing screws, and we use, um, roofing, um, we use screws for all the rafters. We don't use nails. Well, our gas and um, we use it 24, 24 grid, 24. We use, um, I, I, um, I believe, it was, <laughs> before it was, um, long time before Maria, it was something. I, I didn't even know the name. It was so light and thin and thing, you know, the hurricane would just lift up everything, but the, it is um, a harder gas heavier. Have be a duty government as we in right now. I mean, don't use in concrete to, to strap up the um, rafters. Then we use the hurricane ties, the hurricane straps. Then we use hurricane straps. Like to every rafters, get hurricane tie, hurricane straps. Change is, is of course a very good change because of the kind of storm and the kind of system we're facing during those times. I think the change for the code is a, is a um, it was. Yeah, very good at that time to change the code. He says the houses before Hurricane Maria were not nearly as resilient as the houses today. They were more um, having as roof. All right, so we have having more, more, um, more concrete roof right now. So that's why I make, uh, that make it more resilient again. So I'm going to run my hurricane. Yeah. Compare in before and now, I believe we can sustain at least a 200 miles per hour wind right now. Compare in um, the time we still build and the time we're building right now, it's still different. We have a big code, everything changed. So our building code changed. So we're building, as I say, more resilient right now. So whether it's the implementation of better building codes, creating fiscal policies around natural disasters, or planting root crops ahead of the hurricane season, there is no denying that other Caribbean countries could learn a lot from Dominica, on not just rebuilding, but doing so with resilience in mind. This episode of In The Know was made possible by the United Nations Foundation. I'm Crystal Hoyt. Thank you for joining me.